Welcome back to Garage Science. This is a project I've had parts on hand to do for a while and finally got around to doing it. I'm going to show you how to make a homemade essential oil diffuser that will diffuse for over 12 hours and has the potential to diffuse a high volume of oil if desired. These are the parts I used, a mason jar, an ultrasonic fog maker, a small 12 volt PC fan, some basic mounting hardware, and a bunch of straws. The mason jar I used was about one quart, though you could easily use a smaller one if that's preferred. The important thing to make sure is that it has a wide mouth to accommodate mounting everything onto the lid. The PC fan I used was a basic 12 volt 25 millimeter fan that was originally sold as a cooling fan for 3D printers. You can see the specs for the fan here, and note that it doesn't have a third wire for RPM feedback, and that's not necessary. The fan will either be on or off. The mounting hardware should be long threaded studs or screws that will fit in the PC fan mounting holes and extend below the lid. I'll explain why later. The ultrasonic fog maker uses 24 volts and outputs about 400 milliliters per hour. The output of the diffuser won't be quite that high as some of that fog will condense in the mason jar. You'll notice that the cord has a rubber stopper attached to it and that will help seal the fog maker inside the mason jar. You'll also notice it has a sensor for the water level which automatically turns off the fog maker when the water level gets too low. These are very important features. Another thing to note is that the output of the power supply is 24 volts and the PC fan runs on 12 volts and I'll explain how to overcome this later. Alright, time to start constructing this thing. I started by laying out the components on the mason jar lid and marking their location. I put the PC fan on the opposite side of the lid from the outlet nozzle hole to try and maximize the airflow inside the mason jar. I also made the hole for the fog maker cord near the PC fan since the PC fan will be tapping off the fog maker for power. I marked the location of each component with a permanent ink marker and didn't worry that much about trying to be precise. The next thing to do was to drill the holes in the lid. I started by drilling the hole for the rubber stopper, then the outlet nozzle, and finally the mounting holes for the PC fan. Since I didn't have a drill big enough for the rubber stopper, I had to enlarge the hole using a Dremel. With the stopper hole completed, I test fitted the stopper in the lid to make sure I didn't make the hole too big. Next, I drilled where the PC fan would be mounted and enlarged that hole with the Dremel again. With all the holes drilled in the PC fan, I could now test fit the fan to the mason jar lid as well. Next thing to do was to cut off the connector for the PC fan, split the wires apart, and strip the ends of each wire. After that was done, I zip tied the PC fan to the fog maker wire and adjusted the wire lengths so the fan would sit neatly on the lid. To tap off the fog maker power, the insulation needs to be shaved off so we can attach the wires for the PC fan. I used a sharp hobby knife to slowly shave off the insulation to expose the internal wires. I then separated the wires from each other and shaved off the insulation of each wire to reveal the bare copper wire inside. I then wrapped the red or positive wire of the PC fan around the positive wire for the fog maker. With this setup, I'll show you how I adapted the 24 volt output for the fog maker to the 12 volts needed for the PC fan. I used a potentiometer, also known as a variable resistor, in series with the PC fan in order to find out what resistance was needed to limit the voltage across the PC fan. Essentially, I used a voltage divider to create two voltage drops across the positive and negative wires on the fog maker. The first voltage drop is the 12 volts for the PC fan. The second voltage drop is across the potentiometer. Since I started the potentiometers at its maximum resistance of 5 kilo ohms, there's essentially no voltage drop across the PC fan, as you can see here. And as I lowered the resistance on the potentiometer, the voltage drop across the PC fan went up until it first reached a voltage high enough to start spinning the fan. And then I continued to lower the resistance until the voltage drop across the PC fan got to 12 volts. Once the resistance of the potentiometer was properly set, I unplugged the fog machine and disconnected the potentiometer from the circuit. Then, without messing with the potentiometer setting, I measured the resistance and read just a little under 300 ohms. I had a quarter watt 300 ohm resistor on hand, and since increasing the resistance slightly would only lower the voltage across the PC fan slightly, I knew I wouldn't cause the voltage across the PC fan to be too high. 
I installed the 300 ohm resistor into the circuit and double checked that the voltage drop across the fan was sufficient. It was a little below 12 volts, but the fan still spun plenty fast, so I decided that was okay. This is the final circuit. It's simple enough that you could easily just electrical tape all the components without soldering anything, but I do have a soldering iron, so I soldered everything together and wrapped it in electrical tape. Make sure that the way you wrap the electrical tape isolates each electrical connection from each other so that there are no short circuits. Finally, I trimmed the zip tie and mounted the PC fan to the mason jar lid. I mounted the PC fan so that the excess length from the threaded studs extended below the mason jar lid. The extra length in the studs is to mount an air straightener below the PC fan. Since the fan creates a rotating airflow, the outlet of the fan tends to send airflow outward instead of downward. This will create excess turbulence and not allow much of any flow out of the nozzle for the diffuser. The air straightener will correct this by directing the airflow downward to the water, stirring up the fog and sending it out the nozzle. To make the air straightener, I cut about 1 inch long lengths from the straws. You'll need about 15 or so of these. You can bunch them together and tape them with something that will withstand getting wet. Electrical tape actually works pretty well for this. Here you can see the assembled air straightener. And here you can see it mounted to the PC fan by putting the excess length from the studs through the straw and fastening the air straightener with a nut. It's also a good idea to put a bead of hot glue between the air straightener and the mason jar lid to make sure all the air gets directed through the straws. If you don't have long screws to mount the PC fan, you can use a few post and screw combos like this one to mount the air straightener to the mason jar lid. The outlet nozzle was cut from thick plastic tubing. I used a length between one and one and a half inches, which seemed to work pretty well. The hole in the mason jar lid should be just slightly smaller than the diameter of the tube so that the tube can be screwed into the lid like this. Next is something that wasn't necessary, but helps if you have a mason jar with a domed bottom like mine. I made a holder out of some thick copper wire to hold the fog maker upright and slightly offset from the center of the mason jar. Here you can see it holding the fog maker just slightly to the side so that the water that splashes up while making fog doesn't hit the PC fan or the outlet nozzle. Now to determine the position of the full line. Put water in the diffuser until fog production goes down. Oops, probably helps if you plug the diffuser in. Let's undo that and try again. This time, with power applied, check to see when fog production goes down and mark a water level slightly below that with a permanent marker. There's no need for a minimum level because of the auto shutoff feature on the fog maker. The diffuser is almost done. If you were to leave the diffuser running for a few minutes at this point, you would notice that eventually that fog stops coming out of the nozzle as if it were clogged. If you were to blow into the nozzle, it unclogs it and fog production continues. This is from condensation in the nozzle, which eventually form droplets that collect at the bottom of the nozzle and don't weigh enough to fall out of the nozzle. These droplets clog the nozzle and prevent the fog from leaving the nozzle. To fix this phenomenon, you just have to cut an angle on the end of the outlet nozzle like this. Now the diffuser will happily diffuse water and essential oils until the level gets too low. The homemade essential oil diffuser is now complete, and speaking of essential oils, it's time to add some oils to this new high volume diffuser. Me and my wife use Young Living essential oils and really enjoy them. I'm a bit partial to lavender and cedarwood, so I'm going to add those now. You only need about 5 to 10 total drops of oil depending on how strong you want the aroma to be. It also takes about 12 hours to diffuse all the water in here when it's full, so take that into account when choosing how much oil to add. Young Living essential oil is by far the highest quality essential oil brand. And when it comes to essential oils, it's not even worth the time unless you get the purest oils. If you want to purchase an essential oil starter kit, you can message me on Facebook or follow the link in the video description. You'll notice there was a lot of shameless self-promotion in this video. If you managed to watch this entire video without hitting the subscribe button, then I don't even know how to convince you then. If that's the case, make sure you tell me why you didn't subscribe in the comments. If you did subscribe, hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you want to see how I made this desk, you can click on the link in the video description. That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I really enjoyed making it, and as always, thanks for watching.